giants in Liverpool. And I tell you, what you really see is the biggest squashes I've ever seen since I went to see a royal wedding. It was that many people. Giants are supersized marionettes suspended from towers and cranes. They came to Liverpool some years ago and this was a return visit. The French owner said that this was to be their final performance and that after this one they would never be seen again. So it was not to be missed. Giants were operated by people pulling ropes and weights, but the big giant had teams of people jumping off platforms to move his feet. They must have been absolutely exhausted by the end of the day. It was definitely something to see though, and hundreds of thousands of people had turned out to watch. And then there was the band which played its music so loudly that we nearly all went deaf. The next day, lunch aboard Salty Lass was interrupted by a loud hissing noise. The giant boy was floating past in a giant shoe and he was accompanied by a fleet of interested people. Hi Andy! I think your shoe looks very nice darling. Well didn't you make all this? Looks very good. I love the I, I love the idea. Just take the swan out for a little bit of a yeah. Why don't we hop on? Yeah, he has plenty of room. Uh, you need to go backwards, darling. See you later, sailor. <laughs> I couldn't resist getting in in the act, so I got Salty Sausage out and murder against the marina wall, but I couldn't see very much through all the smoke. Gainer, on the other hand, walked round to the boat lift and she got a much better view there from one of the pontoons. <laughs> No, that was too early. We were too premature there, folks. And just like that, the giants were gone. Are we all systems go? Where are all systems go? I wanted to check the fridge insulation, but unfortunately I have to take the whole kitchen unit apart because all this Korean desk, or all this Korean worktop, is all one piece so the whole thing has to be lifted out and there's no easy way to get to the fridge to check the insulation so rather than putting more insulation on the outside I'm putting it on the inside because I can get to the inside of the fridge quite easily so I've got basically some closed cell foam that I've cut to fit around the cold plate and things like that and um, I just stick it inside the fridge and I've just forgotten which way around it goes it goes that way around so really all I have to do with this Coil it up, position it correctly in here, and that is now in place in the fridge. Occasionally you have to clean the bottom of the fridge, so the bottom piece is this one, which is easily takeable, outable, if such a word exists. And every so often I just lift everything out and take this out and wipe underneath it. 
I put that in, and so we have another layer of insulation in the fridge, which we can easily clean. And then most of our food in the fridge goes in stackable boxes, because that way we, I can use the entire depth of the fridge, which it goes down quite a distance. I mean, if I take my arm and stick my arm in, it basically takes, goes down that kind of depth from, from there to my fingertips. So putting a few things on the bottom of it, leaving a whole pile of air above it, seems to be very, very wasteful. So rather than do that, we stack them in boxes, and uh, the boxes happen to be a perfect fit for the fridge. Two sets of boxes fit the fridge perfectly. It's wonderful. <laughs> and I will put another box in. So this can start to go in. Here on the boat, it's all about using some leftovers. Bev's just been cleaning the fridge. So um, we've got some um, spring onions that look a bit worse for wear. A, just half an onion. A couple of mushrooms that well past their sell-by date. Um, and um, some pepper. So I've chopped everything up and I'm now going to put it into a pan. Which, gosh horror. I'm uh, using Bev's, because uh, she's already had her lunch, um, uh, so I'm using Bev's uh, leftover uh, fat. Yeah, I got these um, kippers all the way from the Isle of Man just so I could clean out the fish. Because I'm going to basically use this vegetable and some rice to make a kedgeri. Ah, so I've got all this lovely, absolutely gorgeous kipper. But they are seconds, so you don't get as much meat as you would on a uh, first, but I'm just basically going to take this all off and um, just flake it into here. Uh, and then I've got a bit of rice. Um, and then I'm just going to give it a quick, another another quick waz, and that will be my lunch. But I tell you now, I'm going to be well full. So I've added my fish to the concoction. I'm now going to add the um, um, parboiled rice and I'm basically just going to fry that for a little bit, add the uh, egg and um, that'll be it done. You just want the rice to uh, absorb all those lovely flavours like from the fish and from the oils and um, so that's what I've done, but now it's ready to serve, so what I'm just going to do is just add some more tomatoes, just add the tomatoes and the boiled egg, literally at the last little bit, a couple more little uh, turns and that's going to be lunch. <laughs> oh geez, it's actually going to taste divine but I think I could do with a little bit more help on the uh, presentation. I think if I could have left the eggs out and then put them on top, I think that would have been much better. Anyway, this is my lunch and I'm going to be well stuffed after all this. <laughs> <laughs>